Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Not Too Complicated 2. How are you guys doing today? How's life? We're going to start today's episode by making a tribute. A few episodes ago I had a problem with making singularities and somebody commented. So I personally think that that person deserves a spot in our base. After I clean up the base a bit. Oops, those are my burgers, don't you worry. Well, I think I broke my pinky, I had to hold shift a lot, but essentially we have four matter condensers, three of them are making us singularities, and this is the speed, which is relatively nice, and one of them is making us matter balls. It's actually so fast that you can't really see it, you can see it much better here. Once that reaches 10 or 15 million, I'm probably going to switch this one to singularities as well. Also I have not chipped out, these are lapis blocks from mini utilities, they're expensive. Somebody suggested that I should use concrete instead, but no, we won't posh but not a very obvious posh. In the comment section of a previous video, somebody suggested that probably I should hook up the drives and fill them in. So I don't know, let us make a few discs. We are never ever going to use them. But it's nice, it adds a bit of color. Actually, I did not think this through, this is gonna take ages. Yeah, I went up ahead and finished everything, that's like 640 discs. That was a lot. But just before we move on to our main project of the day, I want to expand our CPUs. You know, just add two more of them. That is one. And there you go, the second one. Very good, we have 8 massive CPUs, we can remove the old ones, you know, the garbage ones. It has been a while later and I have been working on something which was not very successful, I was trying to get hydrogen. I mean millions of hydrogen, it didn't work out. So for the moment let us focus on the main project of today's episode and when I figure this out, we'll do it together. The main thing that we are going to work today is that you might notice that there is a Californium 250 singularity, which comes from Californium 250 which comes from depleted HECF249 fuel. How do we get it? Well, we get it from LECM243. How do we get that one? MOX241. This is my worst nightmare. Somebody took the worst part of nuclear craft in my personal opinion and fit it inside the progression of this mod pack. At least nuclear craft had a few machines. Anyhow, that's not very important. Let's start with MOX241. And the first item that we are going to need is plutonium 242. We already have plutonium the vial on auto crafting. We can also make the plutonium ingots, and that is the correct recipe because we do have access to slot fillers. And we even have plutonium 242 on auto crafting. That is great. Then never mind, we move to uranium. Uranium is more or less the same story, we need to put uranium ingots inside an isotope separator and we will get uranium clumps. And uranium clumps inside another isotope separator is going to give us uranium 238, which can be used in making the MOX 241. All of that being said, it means that now we have MOX nuclear fuel on auto crafting, so I should be able to order 100 of it. And I'm going to hope that it's going to be decently fast. It is, good. But that MOX nuclear fuel also has to go inside a fusion reactor. Aha! This is a very small reactor, it is cooled by water and it has 75 fuel assemblies. You know, there's like 5 columns in the center. It's also a bit chunky so that we can have more coolant inside so that it doesn't overheat. I might have to tweak the water source but let us start the reactor first and then see where we stand. The first item that we need is one more fusion reactor port so that we would be able to pump in the fuel. And I need to sleep. <laughs> Again. So MOX241 has to go inside a chemical oxidizer, we will get the gas. The gas has to go inside a fusion reactor, we're going to get steam which we don't need. But we are also going to get depleted MOX241. That has to go inside the PRC with fluoride dust so that we get depleted MOX241. And nuclear waste. So this chemical oxidizer that we have over here is going to make us the MOX gas. And I guess we are going to need two output hatches. This one is going to be for steam. Yes, output coolant. And this one is going to be for waste. Obviously waste is a gas so it has to go inside the PRC. Was it the PRC first? Yeah, the PRC needs water. Good. A power, obviously. I have to be really careful in doing this because once these pipes are full of nuclear fuel, uh, we can't really move anything. So I don't know, maybe let's move the PRC lower by one block. And once we get the nuclear waste, we need to convert it into plutonium. So we are going to need a centrifuge, which is glitched out. Okay. And once that nuclear waste is converted into plutonium, we can put it inside the solar neutron activator, well, to recycle the fuel completely and also get neutron gas which gives us tiny piles of neutrons. I have been doing some cabling, I have ordered extra MOX fuel, 
and the way that I'm feeding the reactor is relatively simple, so we are going to need fluorite dust for a lot of items, therefore I have an export bus with an ender chest. There is another export bus for MOX nuclear fuel, you need some speed upgrades. I was wondering why it's low. <laughs> Anyways, it's crafting the MOX fuel and it's putting it inside the chemical oxidizer through an entangled block. I have already upgraded everything, this one does not have power upgrades. But generally, if I have not messed up anything, which I kind of did, you know, the tube is too long, so it's gonna take ages to fill in. But anyways, I was going to say that our reactor should be ready. We have a maximum burn rate of 75, which is a bit too much. We start with 10 and see how it goes. Are we good? We're not good. What if we cheat and use an entangled block for the coolant port? That should be a lot of water. We try this again. Oh, come on. <laughs> there is no way in this universe that you're consuming that much coolant. So something is really weird. Even at one millibucket per tick, I can't run it. You see, this is one millibucket per tick. Just look at the coolant. Yeah, you see, it's dropping. There is no way in this universe I'm not producing enough water or I'm not pumping enough water. I'm very confused. Did they want us to go with sodium cooled? Water doesn't count, they changed some values. I don't know. Uh, just to clarify something, even at one millibucket per tick, it's incredibly fast. So I don't know, should we get sodium? How do we get sodium? Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'll be right back. Hello, I'm back. Uh, we have two thermal evaporation towers, as usual the solar panels are for decorative purposes, but we do have resistive heaters. And down here we're getting chlorine, as well as sodium. Which is being converted into liquid sodium, that means we should be able to put it inside an ender tank? Yes. And considering the fact that I think they have changed the values, I don't think the reactor has to be this big. It also doesn't say that the MOX241 is radioactive, so I can break it, right? Actually, I kind of have to vein mine everything so that it resets. Yes, thank you for the quest. There are no radioactive material in the pipes, so we should be able to break them. And I think the reactor is gone. So we do this one more time and see how it goes. So if this doesn't work, I have no idea what to do. This time we will go with 20 fission assemblies. Not more. I know that I also need to recycle the superheated sodium, but for the moment I just want to know its consumption. So you pump it in. Isn't it supposed to be sodium? So, two very important points, uh, that was not supposed to be liquid sodium, it was just supposed to be sodium. So no rotary condensator. It's a disappointment, I know. Mechanism without a rotary condensator is like a pizza without cheese. Anyhow, the reactor is filling in and it's gonna take ages. Another thing that I have noticed, which I had no idea, is that we have, I don't know, like 120 pumps or something crazy. You cannot extract the equivalent of 120 pumps from the same ender tank. For some reason it doesn't catch up, so we have different channels now. So maybe the problem that we had originally with the reactor, which we could not fill it in with water, is because of the ender tanks. Anyways, I have never ever done a sodium cooled reactor, so we are going to proceed and see what happens. So that is the fusion reactor. This is going to be the thermoelectric boiler. It can be 18 by 18 by 18, ours is going to be 11 by 11 by 17. The bottom layer has to be covered by superheating elements. So we're going to have a total of 81, I think. Yep. I'm assuming the superheated sodium is also a gas, so here are some pressurized tubes. That will go inside the boiler. A few layers above the superheating element, maybe halfway through, we're going to have another layer of pressure dispersers. So I don't know, somewhere around here? Maybe. We need to have one more boiler valve for water and on the top we're going to have another valve for steam. So I guess here is fine. And we turn it to output. <laughs> this stupid thing needs so much glass. Doesn't have to be glass, but you know, takes a lot of blocks. So the boiler itself is also ready. I'm using a quantum entangler porter to transfer the water and well, it's gonna take a lot of time to fill in. Although not as much as the reactor, so that's good I guess. Essentially, what we're doing is that we're processing fissile fuel, that's going to generate heat. We're cooling it down with sodium. Sodium is going to get superheated, it goes inside the boiler, it's going to boil the water, water is going to make steam. Steam goes inside the turbine, which we haven't made it yet, and then water goes back into the boiler. And I have not done the math, so I don't really know if it's gonna work. But on a positive note, I know how to make a turbine. Oh, well, as it turns out, it's been such a long time that I have made the turbine that I wasn't really sure. But thankfully, we do have a guide, so I'll follow that. We're going to have nine turbine rotors. It says it has to be odd number, or maybe I was just reading it wrong. We don't really want it for power, so it doesn't really matter. We add the rotors. 
we need to have one rotational complex on top since this is a 9 by 9 we are going to need 80 pressure dispersers because you know it's a 9 by 9 a rotational complex in the center so for the moment it seems that we are doing fine we could have made it taller <laughs> a bit <laughs> yeah who cares but on the top of the pressure dispersers we're going to have electromagnetic coils i guess 81 of them oops and then we're going to need a bunch of turbine vents maybe a hundred you know for that stupid small reactor this is an overkill yeah, I think we're done. We just need a few valves and I need to cover the rest. So I'm not really sure. Steam has to go in the bottom side. It has to spin the turbine, right? Water should come out from the top side. That just seems fair. I'm not sure. And for the rest, we're just going to use structured glass. The structure formed. I was sure there's going to be an error. Oh, one thing that I actually forgot is that uh, whenever the sodium is cooled down, uh, we need to pump it back into the reactor. So I added one more boiler valve with pressurized tube and that goes inside the reactor. How would you take the power out? Oh, you're irritating. Come here. Aha. It connects to the vents. So if we take the water and... No. I forgot that steam is a gas, so we have a pressurized tube that goes into the bottom layer. And for the water that we need to extract, we're just using the vents here. Uh, which obviously goes inside the quantum entangler porter and goes back into the boiler. However, let us do a very small safety check. We're giving it fuel, that is correct. We're giving it sodium, that is good. We are extracting the waste, that goes inside the PRC. Superheated sodium is going to go inside the boiler, it's on extract. Boiler is getting water and it's actually full of water. Steam is going to be extracted from the boiler and goes inside the turbine. Water goes back into the boiler. So I guess we're good. Um, should we activate it? I know it's not full, but can it run? Something happened. We're gaining coolant. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's superheated sodium. That is sodium. Everything seems to be working fine and we are gaining coolant. The turbine is also working for some reason, but not producing water. That works. My first time. Don't explode. Please. So the reactor works fine, but you might notice a problem. There's no water. This thing is still hot, so we're boiling any water that we're getting anyways, but what we can do is that we can remove these heat dispensers and move them a bit higher. In that case, there should be more space for water and less space for steam. The issue is that I'm not really sure if that's a good idea. Also, I have no idea where the water went. Shouldn't you give me back water? Uh, one mistake that I did is that I was not extracting the water, the quantum entangler porter was exporting it on its own. And if it does it on its own, it's going to do like one bucket per tick. Now we're doing, I'm hoping, more than 64 buckets per tick. So if we try this one more time... <laughs> is the water gone? Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's good, I guess. It's just that one thing which has me worried is that I'm not really getting back my water. Temperature is at 102. Uh, can we go to 2 millibuckets per tick? Temperature is good, water is good, and I'm still gaining coolant. You know, every time that it glitches out, I'm like, what the hell happened to my water? But I think we're good. It's at 100 degrees and these are supposed to be steel. So I guess we're fine. 5 millibuckets per tick? 112 degrees. If you're living in the US, that is 4,288 Fahrenheit. Water is going down, okay. So if it's not obvious, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to make a closed loop system. The amount of steam is always going to be the same, water is going to be the same, and sodium is going to be the same. The problem is that every single mod pack that I have played since 1.7 always had a sink or some sort of an infinite water source. And you know, water was never the problem. So I had a huge issue that the turbine was not giving me any water. But you might notice, now it's giving me water. One thing that I had no idea is that if you want water back from your turbine, you're going to need a layer of saturating condensers on top of the electromagnetic coils. It doesn't have to be this much, but I guess this is fine. So now if we activate our turbine, it should give us water back. Let us give it a test and see. Yes, yes, we're getting water. It can output a maximum of 2000 buckets. We're not even pumping that much, so who cares? But now it should be a relatively closed loop, so if we increase the burn rate to 5 millibuckets per tick, we should be fine. Nope. I think we are not pumping it out fast enough, so let's have a few pipes. I'm really hoping this is going to pump it out fast enough. Sodium is fine. And for the first time in our lives, water is also fine. So can I go to 10 millibuckets? Again, sodium is fine. Water is also fine. 
Nice. Well, with the temperatures that we are working, I think we can even go to maximum burn rate, which is 35. Because what's gonna change? Nothing. Temperature is at 183, water is keeping up, everything is keeping up. So in theory, I can even add more rods. That's not a problem. But we should not forget why the hell are we doing all of this. Well, we are getting depleted MOX241, which is later on going to give us curium, but we are also converting the nuclear waste into plutonium that goes inside the solar neutron activator, and we get neutron gas. You're still fine, right? <laughs> I can't believe this. So for the moment, let us entangle the solar neutron activator to an entangled block, like so. I believe we are going to need a crystallizer, we already have one. A neutron fluid is not radioactive, is it? No. Therefore, inside the crystallizer, we're going to get piles of neutron. Aha! Success! Neutronium also has a singularity, so we're going to need millions of piles of neutrons, but the issue is that it also has a seed. It is made from blocks, but that's at least manageable. And besides, we're not in a hurry. This setup did not turn out the way that I wanted it to. I wanted to have three reactors for three different types of fuel so that I don't have to break them every time. But I guess this works. And also later on, we are going to add much more fuel rods uh, when the sodium reaches a certain level. But honestly, for the moment, we're not doing that bad. Uh oh, uh, so that's a problem. You're not processing it fast enough. And I can't really break that. No, I can break that. Depleted MOX241 gas is not radioactive. Or maybe it doesn't really tell you. No, it's not radioactive because here we don't have a tooltip, but for the waste, we have a tooltip. So I need one more PRC, I guess. And maybe for the moment, you work a bit slower. Thank you. Actually, we don't really need to break anything. We have entangled blocks. So what we can do is that we can remove the ender chest, uh, get two more PRCs. They will go here. I have no idea what was the setting on the original PRC, so what we're going to do is that we're going to copy you and paste it here. Therefore, you should be able to get the fluoride. That is great. Get some power, I guess. Yes. And for the rest, we are going to use entangled blocks. I thought if later on I'm going to go with more fuel rods, it does make sense to have more PRCs. So now we have a total of seven. So if I put this guy back to 35 millibuckets per tick, everything is generally fine. And are we gaining extra fuel? Depleted fuel. Uh, not really. The question is, how many do we have? 1039. That's a good number. Since everything seems to be very stable, I'm also voiding the power just in case. Uh, let us try to get some curium. We really don't have curium itself on auto crafting, so let me make some patterns. Pattern is going to be something like this. One uranium plus one beryllium equals one curium. I covered everything. How do I get down? Ah. So, curium goes in and we should be able to order it. I don't know, 1000? Ah, do you know why it's not working? Because I forgot to add a filter for beryllium. Now we should be good. Or did I put it in the wrong chest? I put it in the wrong chest. Yeah, that is the fission reactor. You're... Okay, that color. Yes, I found the correct chest. Not much is going to happen. It's just going to break down some uranium and beryllium. But let us do this one more time. Can we order 1000? Yes, now it works. Now, what we want to do is that we want to make the curium ingot, therefore we are going to need some slot fillers. Give me a hundred. So this should work fine. And now that the pattern has been set, we should be able to order like, I don't know, 1000 ingots? Yes. And it works. So the curium ingot that we get from the alchemistry mod is useful. Do you know why? Obviously, you know. It goes inside a fuel reprocessor, that one, and it does give us the clumps. The clumps are going to give us curium 243. And that is exactly what we need for the next tier of fuel. And the other part, which is curium 246, we are getting it from depleted MOX241. I need more fuel reprocessors. <laughs> this is crazy. But generally, if that is the case, we can have a pattern for LECM243. And if I'm not wrong, I should be able to order at least 100. I can't order 1000. So 800 it is. We are getting closer to Californium. Californium is more or less the same setup. We need to start burning the LECM243. That is going to give us the depleted version, and the depleted version is going to give us Californium 249, which we need to combine it with Californium uh, something? Yes, 252, which we can later on get it from Californium clumps. Now that everything is set, we're going to get rid of the MOX 241. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio between fuels, you're going to lose a bit, so maybe we go with 40,000? That's stupendously expensive. But okay. Oh my goodness, lag. <laughs> And FYI, this is why I need a lot of hydrogen. 
we need 255,000 slot fillers. We ordered 40,000 mocks 241, and one thing that I did not pay attention to is plutonium. It's half a million. So basically my worst bottleneck is the fusion reactor from the alchemistry mod. Can't really do anything about it, so 